Our aging population presents many long-term care challenges. There are about 30,000 people living in nursing homes, residential care facilities, or assisted living homes in Oklahoma. It's estimated that 50% of us will spend a portion of our lives in a long-term nursing care facility. Finding the right place for someone you care for can be a daunting task. When someone you love is not able to care for themselves at home anymore, there are many options available. But selecting the right long-term care facility requires some important research. Public records of all nursing, residential treatment homes, and assisted living facilities are on the Oklahoma State Department of Health website. There will be um, investigations in all facility types. There will be the follow-up surveys. There will be the physical plant inspection surveys. And there will be the complaint investigations. Doria Huser is the Chief of Long-Term Care Inspections for the State Department of Health. The calendar year 2011, we did do uh, 3,873 investigations. So while on the one hand, I have to say that everything was not done on time and we did have a little bit of backlog log going into 2012, I think that's an enormous workload of accomplishment for us, um, about 82 surveyors. To really do the job you think needs to be done, how many more people would you need out in the field? Well, we've been in discussions about that, and we do feel like that we need at least 93 trained, certified surveyors in the field to get this work done. That number I gave you of 82, of that number, uh, it, 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 due to turnover, we've had anywhere from 20 to 30 percent that were new in training, not certified. So it has been a big challenge to get the work done because your seasoned people are mentoring those new people and that takes time and then um, they're also um, short of seasoned certified staff that can be more active in participating in the investigations. Oklahoma State Department of Health records show that in 2011 there were 392 priority allegations of abuse, neglect, or misappropriation of resident property at nursing homes. 34 percent of those cases were substantiated. It's Huser's opinion that a long overdue law will reduce the number of abuse cases. Right now, those who apply to work in a long-term care facility are only given a statewide background check. The bill, signed into law this year by Governor Mary Fallon, will change that. Dusty Dar, Associate State Director of Advocacy for AARP in Oklahoma, explains. What will happen is applicants that want to work in a long-term care facility will go in, they'll do a live scan of their hand, so it's a live scan or a digital record of your fingerprints, which is much more thorough and it will be nationwide in scope. A nationwide background check could have prevented the hiring of Gerald Perry, who in May was charged with sexually assaulting five mentally challenged elderly patients in a Guthrie nursing facility. Upon further investigation, it was revealed that this long-term care worker had actually been charged with murder. It was reduced to manslaughter in another state. He had also been convicted of of felon in possession of a firearm. A 2005 study by the Office of Inspector General for the nation's Department of Health and Human Services showed Oklahoma had problems with long-term residential care aides who should never have been hired. 52 aides with current certification in Oklahoma had substantial adverse findings in 16 other states. So that does show you that they will jump from state to state and, and sometimes it is to get access to a vulnerable population. The state has an ombudsman program to help monitor the well-being of long-term care residents. Ombudsmen are citizen advocates for people living in those facilities. They go in, they befriend the residents, they develop a rapport with them, try to find out what their uh, concerns, what their issues are. Bill Whited is a deputy ombudsman with the Oklahoma Department of Human Services. We investigate things as serious as abuse, neglect, and exploitation all the way down to dietary issues of whether or not a person's getting a meal that they like, that they enjoy, or whether or not they're getting that therapeutic diet that's been ordered by the physician if they're a diabetic or something of that nature. There are 11 ombudsman offices across Oklahoma at INCOG Regional Area Agencies on Aging. Sarah Strecker, Loretta Bailey, and Leslie Smiley are ombudsman supervisors for Tulsa Creek and Osage counties. They advise visiting three or four long-term care facilities before making a choice. I would uh, pay attention on how the staff is interacting with the residents. I would 
uh, look and see if they seem broomed, their hairs combed, brushed, if it looks like they've had their teeth brushed, uh, if they look like they're happy, are they involved with activities. Ombudsman supervisors can tell how many complaints a facility has had as well as answer any number of questions. Also there's a lot of staff turnover in some, we can tell them that. Usually care is worse in a home where there's a lot of staff turnover. So we can give them things like that. And where does that information come from, the turnover? We know it because we go in there so often and family members call us. 175 volunteer ombudsmen in the state are crucial for the program. Each is given extensive training. Over 60% of the residents in long-term care facilities have no one to come visit them or to advocate for them. So our program is very important to be able to go in and talk to the residents so they will have a voice through us. 27 volunteers in the Tulsa office are assigned to 33 locations. Each side is visited two hours per week. More volunteers are needed here and across the state. I'll be quite honest with you, we could use many more ombudsmen, volunteer and paid staff. The funding um, is limited in nature as it is in all programs. The people we talked to for this report say while there are serious problems at some sites, there are still many very good if not excellent residential facilities in the state. It just takes some research and legwork to find a proper, safe and happy setting for some of our most fragile citizens.